Live sports uh, have come a long way back from the depths of the pandemic last year, but the Delta COVID variant is now a big concern. Uh, leagues and organizers uh, for everyone. We just saw a summer Olympics without spectators. And late last week, the U.S. Tennis Association reversed its decision to allow full capacity at the U.S. Open, uh, which starts later this month. Fans uh, will now be banned from the tournament's qualifying rounds. Join us now uh, to talk about that and so many other things. Former tennis pro, sports icon uh, Billie Jean King. Her new memoir is called All In, an autobiography. Billie Jean, uh, thanks for joining us. And we'll, we're going to talk about things uh, other than COVID, but that is front and center for uh, for uh, a lot of us, I still am trying to figure out who the other 99 people in the last hundred or in the last century were as influential as you. But that's 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 really something. Being one of the most influential people of the century, and and I wouldn't disagree with that. Who are the others? Many others. I don't know. <laughs> you talk about Life Magazine. I, I do know there were no presidents mentioned. No Which chance. was not good, yeah. but the other, there was about two or three other athletes, Muhammad Ali and I there you think go. Uh, yeah. Jackie Robinson. I think that was the other two. So we are in a world where, I, I mean, it, in the Olympics, some athletes said that they, they found it difficult to perform at their, their best level without the, uh, I guess, without the excitement of the fans watching this. Do you think it would matter uh, for you if you were playing today, if you were playing tennis in an, in an empty stadium? Oh, it makes a huge difference, but um, you have to wrap your brain around it if you're going to be an athlete. I mean, that's your job as a professional athlete. We are entertainers. Uh, I know what I would do. I'd wrap my mind around everyone all over the world watching. I'd really try to bring that in as if they're there with me. Um, but it's, everyone's different. Every athlete's different, as you well know, every person. Um, but it's been difficult, but we're trying to worry about safety uh, but and also there's media uh, contracts, um, you know, media content is huge. It's a huge revenue stream. Also, there's uh, gaming, betting. So there's a lot of income uh, streams coming in uh, when you do actually have these matches happen or in, in, the, in any of the other sports. I mean, we really depend on that money for the sport. So um, it's vital that these uh, athletic contests happen. I did love watching the Olympics, I must say, this year. Um, I loved it. I thought uh, it just was fantastic. And for, and for tennis, it was great because they kept it on one channel. I think mm. it was the Olympic channel, uh, so which many things, I thought was so helpful. So many things in your life that, that, that I, I want to talk about. I'm looking for the, uh, the exact quote, but uh, that, are, that are in your, uh, in your memoirs. And one of the, the, one of the quotes that, that struck me was that um, back when you started, you were not, you were living the world that you wanted didn't exist at that time, the world that you wanted to live it's, in. It's, it still doesn't. <laughs> That's that, what I wanted to ask you. Does it exist now? Uh, and then no. I, I couldn't, I, well, I couldn't help thinking of, the, of a, you, we've come a long way, baby, from Virginia. Remember the old ads for Virginia Slims? Yes, which, uh -huh. is, which was the our, tour. Our sponsor. Which was the tour that, that started with your, your nine or, or eight colleagues that, that really put ladies' tennis on the map. We've come away, but we, we've come a long way. We have a long way still to go. And a lot of it is due to you, Billy Jean, that, 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 that you, you've changed and, and helped move us along, but not to where we need to be. Well, you brought up a very important um, thing that happened in 1970 when you said eight other colleagues and I were called the original nine. We were just inducted to the International Tennis Hall of Fame. We're the first group ever to be inducted. They usually do not do that. And that was the birth of women's professional tennis. And what made it so significant is that all of us in our 20s were willing, and some actually a couple of teenagers, I think, were willing to forego our uh, careers for the future generations. And the three things, three considerations were that any girl in the world, if she's good enough, would have a place to compete. Number two, we would be appreciated for our accomplishments, not only our looks. And number three, finally, to make a living playing tennis. Uh, that we love so much. And we'd all come from amateur tennis a few years before that where we were making $14 a day. So that was really important. And then also getting equal prize money in the majors in the Grand Slam uh, was really important to us uh, because we were getting a different um, percentages, probably like uh, 30 to 40 percent of what the guys were getting. They were getting rid of events. So we really needed to step up. And we did finally 
uh, get equal prize money in 2007 in all four. The U.S. Open, which is coming up uh, soon, was the first one in 1973. Uh, so we're really, really uh, lucky that we finally did that. So women's tennis is uh, in the leadership. You look at uh, you look at the different uh, well Forbes magazine uh, every year. Uh, what the women, the top ten uh, money makers are always women tennis players. Uh, I think they finally had a soccer player this year at number yep. ten. So we've been leading forever, but we want to uplift all the other women's sports to get equal pay and for equal work and type of thing. So uh, soccer's trying very hard, um, but we need more sports for women. I mean, let's just face it, baseball, American football, um, NHL, there's, no, there's nothing for women yet. Uh, you, you said, but we're not, not with there. the top players. You said we're not there yet. One of the other points you make in your memoirs is that uh, each generation has work to do, a continuation of what, what the last generation did. So, we, and we've made it, we have made progress in, in racial issues, in uh, uh, sex, sexist uh, uh, we've issues. Made, we've in, made progress, in, yes. In LGBT Sorry, issues and all these things. But, but you point out then the next generation has to take the progress it's made and then and then take it even further and, and we're seeing that happen right now. Yeah, well, I mean, you a, must think, yeah. It, it's a lot better. Coretta Scott I mean, King's quote. Go that's ahead. A Coretta, Coretta Scott King has a wonderful, there's so many struggles and I, I'm not saying it exactly, but uh, freedom is never really won. You have to earn it and win it every in every generation. So uh, that's why Black Lives Matter, all these, it's so important that everyone continue to fight for freedom and fight for representation by everyone.